Well, do you ever find yourself doing things simply because that's the way you've always done it? Maybe you grew up with it and you really never thought about the reason behind why you were doing things. Hi, I'm Amy over at aimforcreativelife.com and ever since I started becoming an aspiring minimalist, I've really questioned why I do a lot of things, especially when it comes to bringing stuff into my home and the values I'm conveying to my children. So today I wanted to share with you some ideas for a more intentional clutter-free Easter that might serve you better than the sugar and clutter-filled Easter basket ritual that you may have done in the past. I kind of delved into this topic a little bit with my minimalism Christmas and birthday gift video. I really try to have a balanced approach of realizing that my kids are only little once and that there's a lot of excitement and I have good memories when I was a kid too. Here's a photo of when I was a kid and my mom made my dresses. It was really a special time for our family. In the few short years that my kids are at home, my oldest is almost eight, so he only has about 10 more years at home and my daughter's five. She's got just a little bit longer than that. I decided to view the Easter basket not as this cultural push for more stuff, which I mean, the marketing's heavy. Right after Valentine's Day, wham. But I really thought of how I can use the Easter basket as an opportunity for intentional parenting instilling our values in our kids, giving them great memories based on experiences, and just really make the most of every opportunity with my kids. So let me share with you what I decided to put in my kids' Easter basket. I've got a couple of creative DIYs worked in if you're interested, and if you're a person of faith like me, stick around to the end when I'll be sharing a few ideas of how I'm going to use the Easter basket contents as teachable moments. Now my kids don't actually have their own Easter baskets. And the reason for that is I had very limited storage in my home, so I'm just going to be doing a family basket. And like I said, this is a minimalist approach in that there's not going to be a lot of little toys and doodads that are going to get left on their playroom floor. What I wanted to put in here were either consumables, things they already needed, or experience type gifts. This basket is about 90% things from the Dollar Tree, so it's really great if you're on a budget and you're like me, you don't like spending a lot of money, you'd rather save. I did not wrap these because I kind of had them divided and based on what they are, my kids will know who it's for. And we're going to be going through this together anyways. So first of all, what I'm really excited about are these seed packets. My kids loved watching things grow last year when we sprinkled these around, so I was looking forward to doing that with them again. I've done a garden for a few years and the kids like to be right in there with me. It's a wonderful learning experience. If they're outside, their behavior and attitudes definitely improve. And you're outside, so you're getting vitamin D. Going along with that theme are these really adorable little gnome and fairy garden figurines. I thought they could just sit under the flowers. When I was a kid, I sure loved doing stuff like that. I think it's a great way to be creative and use their imaginations. Moving on with the flower theme, my daughter lately has really been into doing her hair. These came in a multi-pack of six, but I'm saving three for another occasion, and I'm just gonna decorate these really quick. Since she already has some pretty new little dresses, she's not gonna get a new dress for Easter, and instead she's gonna get these. And that's also why I got her these. They've got some little gems on them too. Now she's into wearing pigtails, so we needed some more of these. If you watched my storage closet declutter, you know we had a lot of toothbrushes. I might as well give them a new one. These were in multi-packs, that's why they've got the funny favor bag toothbrush cover on them. Hers has My Little Pony, and his is just yellow and blue, like his recent bedroom makeover. And in that video I mentioned he loves black, so I also got him new socks because he was in need of those. And these are actually really comfortable. I got the adult ones from the Dollar Tree and they kind of have that elastic -y lift in the arch and some extra cush. So I think he's gonna really like these. I don't know about you, but after Christmas and Valentine's Day, there's a lot of candy floating around in our house. So I did not get them a lot of candy except for these. Like I said, as people of faith, I wanted to focus on the reason for the season for us. And so these are like little cards and I did find these at the Dollar Tree, which I was thankful for. This one says, may his light shine upon you. And this says, rejoice in the wonder of the day. So that will just be a special treat to celebrate the day. So the way minimalists like to approach gifts is very, like I said, experience oriented, like with these gardening things or consumables. So I got these bath paints that the kids could have. I thought my son would do the red and green one and my daughter the purple and pink one, but that's a fun creative thing. Similarly, I thought that these were really cool. They're Crayola bath bombs and they're multicolored so that when you put it in there, it could kind of be an educational thing about colors in the water when you mix the different colors. So this one would be turquoise, obviously, and this one would be purple. Since my daughter has sensory issues and does not wear socks, I just got her this princess tissue box for her room and this princess puzzle. I got my son the Avengers puzzle. They come in these really cute tins. I find that a lot less frustrating than those boxes that fall apart and rip on the edges. And also they're a little bit nicer to be able to pass on to a friend if they're not interested in keeping them after we've put them together. Now sunglasses are things that you usually have to replace because they either get lost or break easily. But one idea is including them in your Easter basket if that's what your kids need now. These cute kitty ones, by the way, came from Amazon and I'll share the link below. But there are also sunglasses from the Dollar Tree. Maybe your kids' markers are all drying up. You could replace those. Those are things you might need and would use anyways. My kids have plenty of markers, but they were asking for glue and these Crayola ones were also from the Dollar Tree. Since they've been doing popsicle stick crafts lately, they needed more. 
Glitter is very popular at my house. I like these glitter glue pens because unlike the powder, the glitter doesn't travel all over the house. And I'm gonna have my kids split these up evenly and share them. Another thing my kids really like are window clings. I've talked in my wreath videos how I like decor that's not knick-knacky sitting around my house. So I like to put them on my doors and my kids like to put these on the window. I thought it was neat that there was a boy and a girl and I have a son and a daughter. So I thought that they could share this. And I like how they could put the hands and the ears in any configuration that they wanted. Now, this whole book is not going to be in here for Easter. It is a coupon book from Hallmark that my friend gave me to use with them. And it does have a lot of things in here that I'm like, you'd have to be like Wonder Woman to be able to do some of these with your kids. I don't have the patience for some of these, such as this one, which is you can talk on the phone all day, but there are some fun experience-based ideas in here. And I chose one for each of my kids. My son has been talking about wanting breakfast in bed and that's what this one's for. And this one is a cute um, good for one evening of being treated like royalty. She'll be excited about that. And last but not least are these little tiny, basically mini light brights. I remember those being the big thing as a kid. And so when I saw these, I was like, oh no, those could be clutter in our house. But I thought for a dollar, they would be worth it for an object lesson. And for the nostalgia of it and the creativity, they could keep them in their bedroom as decor or as a nightlight. Hey, if this is the kind of content that you were searching for, please just take a second to click the like button and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow and helps more people to find my content. I really appreciate it. Well, I hope these ideas for a more intentional, experience-based Easter basket have inspired you to maybe reconsider and tweak your Easter traditions to serve you better and not fill your home with more clutter. I want to pause for a minute and speak to those moms that are looking for more ways to incorporate intentional living into your life. Right now I'm reading this book by Laura Casey called Cultivate, A Grace-Filled Guide to Growing an Intentional Life. Her story is all about how she was in the pits and she was able to turn it around through her faith and decision to live intentionally and she weaves in gardening stories. So check it out, I'll put it in the link below if you're interested in a good read during the spring season. So you always think twice before you get something for your kids that takes batteries because that's an extra hassle for mom and dad, but I just thought the teachable moment would be worth it. I thought I could use them as a faith lesson of how through God's love, Christ came into the darkness to give us forgiveness and hope. And now we too can be like a light and offer hope to a hurting world. Now it's obviously not in here, but another thing I was thinking of doing, my son read about hot cross buns, so I might be making some gluten-free hot cross buns. And, and I think it was in Clubhouse Kids Magazine, it talked about making resurrection rolls, where you wrap some dough around a big marshmallow, and, and when it bakes, it dissolves so that you open it up and it's empty like the tomb. So that I thought was cool too. Now, Dawn from The Minimal Mom, back in 2019, shared in one of her videos how instead of candy, they would fill their Easter eggs with puzzle pieces. And I just thought that was such a great idea. And that actually got me thinking that I have some blank puzzles that I could do my own word art on and hide those around for my kids' scavenger hunt. So this is what I put together. So just using some Sharpies and writing out 1 Peter 1.3. Which reads, In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Which is why Easter is really the most significant holiday for a Christian. And I think my favorite part of this verse is the part where it says a living hope, especially as we're going through this coronavirus thing. And that hope is talked about more in 1 John 5, where it says that if you believe in the Son of God, you may know that you have eternal life. If you end up doing this, make sure that you either have Easter eggs that are big enough to fit your puzzle pieces in or find one with really tiny pieces. Well, thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so that you won't miss any videos about intentional creative living. I aim to upload every Friday, and I hope you have a blessed Easter. Bye-bye.